Professor Jan Hesselbach and his team are inventing unique means of detecting uh, material properties of very small particles, including human cells. They are using radio transmission and reception in a very high frequency spectrum domain in a very smart manner. So the detection becomes cost effective as well as efficient in terms of accuracy. If they deliver on promises, potentials, it may dramatically accelerate the uh, process of diagnosing illnesses uh, at the level of individual cells. Currently, the task is very demanding using other means, very costly and prone to errors. So this is what's unique about Professor Young's work. Efficiency in terms of cost, and efficiency in terms of accuracy. So the topic of my proposed work is actually a variant of radar with electromagnetic waves. The difference to conventional radar is that we go very close to the target and we go very high in frequency. The result is we can detect very small particles and we can not only detect them in shape or diameter, we can also measure the material these particles are made of. So one application is going to be the detection of small cells with a size of a few tens of micrometers. And since we can measure in a very short time, we can detect many cells in a very recent time. As usual for electronic devices, these can be integrated and they become very compact and then they become very low cost compared to other devices, which are based on lasers and optical effects. So one application is in the field of biomedicine, where cells can be detected and characterized and watched over time and how they react with their environment. That opens the way to personalized medicine with a small and compact device, that means low cost. And in the science, that opens the way to investigate large quantities of cells and picking out one single cell which is different from all the others with a reasonable effort in short time. In my view, that opens the way to new prospects in science and for medical application, so it will change the world. So Asagan's proposal, I think, really is directed at the biggest challenge facing humanity, and that's climate change. We've known for a long time that climate change is a severe problem. But I think 2021, with the, with the floods and the fires that we've seen across the globe, makes this proposal all the more timely. His um, ideas and technologies to help us bring cost-effective storage and marry that to the dramatic reductions in renewable energy costs is really a very, very important topic for, for us. And that's why I think it's and potentially ha could have huge impact on the future of humanity. Uh, well, climate change threatens the survival of our species, and we have to decarbonize all aspects of our infrastructure. Um, I think that my work could be the key to decarbonizing the grid, since I'm proposing an extremely low cost storage technology down at $10 a kilowatt hour. If it gets proliferated, we can reach high penetrations of renewables, and that would comprise about 25% of emissions. And with the decarbonized grid, we can electrify transportation and charge electric vehicles from a clean grid, which then could potentially abate another 15% of emissions. So altogether, this one energy storage technology can enable a 40% reduction in emissions, which is almost half the problem. So Dave's work really sits at the intersection between uh, a data-rich future and you know medical diagnostics or the sensing tools that are available to uh, extract information from the human body. Uh, so until this work, people had two choices. They either went to a lab and undertook a very slow process for 
finding out information about biomarkers or how their body's doing, or really look to crude heuristics such as you know uh, wearable watches or other devices. So what Dave has been able to do uh, through advanced sensing technologies is really take this advanced sensing out of the lab and provide us ways to get high fidelity measurements of the human body uh, and do this in real time. And this really opens up uh, an incredible future through using tools like data analysis or machine learning where uh, the hope is humans will be able to extract massive amounts of information about their body exactly when they need it so they can start making actionable changes and hopefully save lives or improve the quality uh, of their life and well-being. My proposal for the Bell Labs Prize is a new technology for diagnosing disease. Currently, diagnostics fall really into two categories. The very high quality diagnostics we get when we go to the doctor's office or the hospital and the very um, low quality uh, measurements we can make from our bodies using things like smartwatches. And my technology tries to bridge the gap between those two technologies where we can have a very accessible technology, something where we can measure ourselves much more often, but can make measurements with qualities similar to what you get in hospital and laboratory settings. And if you can do that, if you can measure your body many times more often than is currently possible with these high quality biomarkers, we can do things in medicine that currently aren't possible. Like we can catch cancers before they're symptomatic. We can tell people they're gonna have heart attacks weeks before they have the heart attack. Uh, we can start to intervene uh, in medicine and keep people healthy in ways that right now we can't do. So much of the current world is being built on our ability to churn through massive amounts of data and to train neural networks to model the relationships in these data. What Marave and Amin have shown is a general and an efficient method to organize these data so you're only looking at the most important parts of it. Once you can limit your search, you're able to open up a vast treasure chest of applications, like the one they present here on modeling the brain from fMRI scans. The work in our Bell Labs prize proposal makes a concrete connection between artificial intelligence and natural intelligence. Our proposal aims to understand how the information flows in the human brain based on different cognitive tasks. To do so, we used a large scale fMRI data set consisting of more than 700 subjects and developed an unsupervised representation learning algorithm that provides robust personalized brain maps, unique to individuals and dynamic with tasks. We could predict the sex, the fluid intelligence, and the cognitive tasks performed by individuals based on their brain fingerprints. Our personalized brain mapping technology could also help doctors better understand the individual differences in brain function and disease. This technology could bring us one step closer to personalized medicine so that we will benefit from personalized diagnostics and treatments that are specifically designed for every single individual. So when we talk about the future, let's first talk about what we believe this future will look like. So the future really is about, well, uh, creating a better environment for all of us to live in an environment that fosters um, happiness, provides safety and well-being to all of us. And for this, we need work that is, how should I phrase that, planet-focused, that improves the health and well-being of people. Uh, work that focuses on feeding people with less waste and less energy consumption. And that's exactly what Amen and team have been doing. They invented and applied technologies to create a healthier and more sustainable and also a safer way to produce the food we all urgently need. Our project revolves around this sensor I'm holding in my hands. This is an insect sensor we invented. What happens is insects fly past this, and when they do, we can extract physiological signals from them. These signals can be then fed to a machine and algorithm that can classify these insects down to the level of sex, species, and even life stage. So why do we care? Insects damage about 20% of all the food that humans eat. And attempts to control insects with pesticides are very expensive, they're bad for the environment, 
and they contribute about 5% of the human carbon footprint. By taking the information from these sensors, growers can do pinpoint interventions using much less pesticide. That saves them money, it's better for the environment, and they can even cut down on global warming. Swarun's proposal is, uh, is about detecting uh, human motion, motion at the macroscopic level, like walking or even muscle movements. The way he does that is by having RFID devices on, on the human body, on the skin or on the clothes and having a very rapid way of reading them. This is going to be very important in the future as we gather all this information and represent humans in, in digital in the digital world uh, and help help humans um, understand about themselves, uh, help people uh, speak when they have uh, other impairments, things like that. And all of this will be done with the privacy uh, taken into account. Yeah, my Bell Labs proposal is about designing wafer thin tattoos using a technology called RFIDs. Now, these are stickers that you can effectively attach to your clothing or to your body, and they can effectively sense their own shape. So imagine being able to interact with your computers and your phones using body gestures or having fitness tracking or medical applications. In fact, we attach these tattoos to the face of uh, users with speech impairments and speech disabilities, and we're able to sense their intended speech uh, over time. Now, this is all building towards an ambitious plan to build next generation battery free wearable devices. And our hope is to design new age wearables that effectively disappear. They're battery free, they're always on, and they can redefine what wearables mean uh, moving forward.